This question says, calculate the magnetic field strength needed on a, some kind of a square loop on a side to create a maximum torque. Uh, uh, okay, so let me first draw the square loop. So uh, let me just draw the in the easiest way, square loop, a loop that is a square. And we are given the length of a side. And we are also told that it's not just one loop, it's a number of them, like you are given some number n of how many times this goes around um, doing the, the square loop thing. And um, it says King for, uh, something about the maximum torque. So I hope uh, as you think through, um, you take some time to think through a setup that would generate a torque. So it's a matter of in what direction is the magnetic field. Let me give you a couple examples that don't work. So for example, if your magnetic field is pointed out uh, of the screen, like, you know, out of the screen, then that one prov uh, produce a torque. You can kind of go through each segment at a time and see if you get a torque that way. Um, so, Let's start out with this segment. So uh, I'm going to go with my uh, earlier expression for magnetic force on the current carrying wire. That force is amount of current times the, the length segment cross product with the magnetic field. So if uh, assume current is flowing uh, counterclockwise, so for the left segment, my L is downward and I orient it until I can curl my fingers in the direction of magnetic field out of the screen. Then my um, thumb is pointed to the left. So, um, so the, uh, uh, and let me do it from my perspective, um, yeah, to the left. So the magnetic force on this segment is pointed this way. And here it's, uh, mag you know, um, upward. So uh, thumb is to the right. So my magnetic force is pointed this way. Uh, the lower segment, again, uh, the finger in the direction of L to the right and orient it so that I can curl my fingers in the direction of the magnetic field out of the screen. My thumb points down, so magnetic force this way. And I hope as you draw this, you get, oh, um, this is just gonna kind of make the loop bulge out. It's not gonna cause it to rotate. There's no torque here. So um, this uh, arrangement of magnetic field doesn't produce torque. Okay, back to square one, or back to trying to figure out the direction of magnetic field. Um, another, is there another direction that won't work? I think the other two directions will actually both work. So we've considered the magnetic field along a direction perpendicular to the screen. So the other two possible directions are either, um, either in a direction like upward, or if not that, in a direction that's uh, uh, horizontal. And I think uh, both of them will produce a torque. So let me uh, let me go with the one where magnetic field is upward. So let's imagine this is the setup for the magnetic field. Now, being set up this way, uh, some of the segments actually will have zero magnetic force. Along this segment here, L and B are antiparallel, so the cross product is zero, same here. L and B are parallel, so the cross product is zero. Here where L and B are perpendicular is where now you get some chance for non-zero force. So let's do, um, so my L in the direction to the left, orient my hand until I can curl my finger upward for magnetic field and cross B, thumb points into the screen. So my magnetic force here uh, on, along this segment should be pointed into the screen. Uh, let me do it from my perspective and make sure it makes sense. <laughs> um, by the way, um, I like whether I do it for your perspective or mine, it actually works fine. It, um, they both give you consistent answer as long as you give your answer in reference to the screen. Um, so let's do it for the segment to, at the bottom here. The the current is going to uh, going to the going to right, <laughs> and uh, I want to rotate my hand until I can curl my finger in the direction of magnetic field, which is upward. Thumb is pointing out of the screen. So my magnetic force here is out of screen. And hopefully as you stare at this, you get a sense that, oh yeah, around this line here, it's going to tend to, uh, so up will be going into screen, 
bottom will be coming out of screen. So it'll tend to rotate this way. Um, so, and if you imagine you are going to the, uh, going to the right side of the thing and looking at it, then as you imagine it rotating, let's see. Um, uh, let me do it from my perspective. So I'm doing it from my perspective on the right side of it, looking at it, rotate. Uh, I think it's uh, rotating clockwise. So um, yeah, it's uh, gonna be uh, rotating this way. I think that's uh, as viewed from um, this observer here, it's yeah, clockwise rotation, yeah. So, so this is the arrangement of magnetic fields we are imagining. And in this setup, uh, so it helps to, I guess uh, the approach I'm using right now is one where I'm doing everything from scratch. Your textbook actually did uh, drive, should have drive the formula for magnetic torque on a current carrying loop. There's a formula that makes things a lot simpler, um, but you can also do it from scratch. So this is my axis of rotation. I have my lever arm here. This is my lever arm. Um, so given some expression for the force, I can relate it to, to torque. The magnetic torque is going to be the lever arm cross product with the force. Uh, in this scenario, lever arm and the force are actually perpendicular. So for the magnitude of this thing, I can say to the R, which will be L over 2, you know, half of the length times um, the magnitude of force, which will be given by this here. Uh, current times length times the magnetic field. Um, and L and B were perpendicular, so cross product simplifies there as well. So here, um, so that's the magnetic torque due to only one of the two pairs. And if I write out the expression for the other pair, it's going to be the exact same expression. So for the, uh, for the net torque, what you need is basically twice of this thing. So that will cancel out that too and give me uh, L times ILB. Let me simplify it a little bit. I see L twice. Um, so I say IL squared times B. So that relates to the torque which you are actually given. Uh, we are given the torque and being asked for the magnetic field. So um, going backward and actually solving this for B P is equal to the torque divided by current times L squared. So yeah, let's plug in the numbers. I think I have uh, everything else. I'm just gonna make sure that I plug everything in basic SI units. The torque is 267 Newton meter, uh, basic SI unit, divided by current, 25 ampere, basic SI units. Oh, and here is where I'm gonna multiply 25 by 220. Because for each one of these I did, there's actually 220 of them. So 220 <laughs> times 25. Um, and then I need the L squared. So there, the uh, 19 centimeters is 0 0.19 meter squared. So when I do that, I get answer of 1.345. And since I plugged in all the numbers in basic SI units, the, my fine, the unit that I get should be basic SI unit, which is Tesla. At 1.345, it's a pretty large uh, magnetic field. Uh, Tesla is a pretty large magnetic field. In fact, an ampere is pretty large current. Um, it, it's uh, the kind of current that um, the things that are designed to provide a uh, uh, large amount of current to, to produces. So, like if you are pulling a, a, an ampere out of normal, like a double A battery, you are drawing a lot of current. Um, so, so yeah, that's the answer. Uh, or, and the, the simpler way, what it amounts to is, this is the formula that you are going to see in the textbook, um, which is the magnetic torque is given by what's called, um, what's called, uh, is it called the magnetic dipole moment? No. Um, well, um, M cross B. Um, this might be magnetic dipole moment. <laughs> the way this relates to quantities that are here is this M is the current times area as a vector. 
And this actually works with the uh, uh, area of any shape. It could be a circular thing uh, that uh, has this uh, magnetic moment. I, I think that is the right term. And you can see it here. The way I arrange the terms here, this is basically my M here. Um, the current times L squared is the area of the square and the magnetic field. So, so you could use this uh, formula, skip all the you know analysis I went through to try to get torque uh, due to a magnetic force on a current carrying load. Uh, but what I want you to demonstrate here is that um, uh, this is, uh, well, I don't know if uh, it's easy to drive the general formula, but you can at least do enough the work for a simple geometry, like a square, to actually drive the formula yourself, or at least to get to a level that reminds you of the formula that applies in more general cases.